UFOs, am I right? They grab our attention, spark the imagination, and today we're diving deep into one of the most enduring cases out there, the Gorman dogfight. Picture this, October 1st, 1948, near Fargo, North Dakota. We're talking clear skies, perfect for flying. And up there, we've got George F. Gorman. A decorated Air National Guard pilot. Gotta emphasize that. Right. Not some guy on the street seeing lights. This is a seasoned pilot. Over 400 hours of flight time, to be exact, Gorman knew the sky like the back of his hand. But this wasn't even the first time he'd seen some weird stuff up there. He'd reported unusual lights before, but this, this was different. This encounter, it stuck with him, convinced him for the rest of his life that he'd tangled with something truly unexplained. And what's fascinating is it makes you wonder, if you were up there, wouldn't you want to investigate? If I saw a strange light, curiosity would get the better of me, for sure. And that's exactly what Gorman did. He spots this light, decides to check it out. What happens next? Yeah. This is where it gets good. He doesn't find some weather balloon or experimental aircraft, oh no. He describes it as a flying disc, glowing red, metallic something straight out of a movie set. Wait, hold on. Glowing red metallic? You're kidding. That's like classic sci-fi imagery right there. Right. And we're not talking about a quick blip on the radar here. This encounter lasted for 27 minutes. 27 minutes. <laughs> Seriously. I can barely pay attention to a movie that long. Most UFO sightings, they're fleeting. A few seconds, maybe a minute. 27 minutes is practically unheard of. So he's got eyes on this thing for 27 minutes. This glowing red metallic disc. What else does he see? What's it doing? He tries to chase it, naturally, being a pilot and all. But this thing, it outmaneuvers him at every turn. Speed, agility, maneuvers no known aircraft of the time could pull off. So we're talking about defying the laws of physics here. That's what Gorman claimed. And get this, he wasn't the only one who saw something that day. Wait, really? I thought it was just his word against, well, everyone else. <laughs> there were ground witnesses, too. People who reported seeing something unusual in the sky around the same time as Gorman. Okay, now that's interesting. Multiple points of view. That makes it harder to dismiss. So, where does Project Sign fit into all of this? For those who don't know, that was the Air Force's early UFO investigation program, right? Exactly. They get wind of this incredible encounter, a decorated pilot, ground witnesses. What do they do? I'm on the edge of my seat here. They come to a conclusion that left many people, shall we say, unconvinced. Let me guess, they chalked it up to a weather balloon. Not quite. They suggested it was likely a weather balloon or maybe a lighted aircraft. A lighted aircraft. You see the problem there, right? A glowing red metallic flying disc is a far cry from your average Cessna with its landing lights on. Exactly. And this is where the Gorman case gets really interesting. You have Gorman. Shaken, sticking to his story. And Project Science saying, nah, probably just a weather balloon or something. Pretty much. Understandably, a lot of UFO researchers back then and even today aren't buying it. It does seem like a bit of a stretch, even for 1948, to explain away something so vivid and well-documented. But why? Why would they do that? Well, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? So are you saying Project Sign was intentionally trying to cover something up? It's hard to say for sure, isn't it? We can speculate all day about their motives, but the fact remains their explanation for the Gorman dogfight just doesn't hold water for a lot of people. And this wasn't the only case where Project Science conclusions were met with skepticism, was it? They investigated a number of sightings during their time, right? Oh, absolutely. Project Sign was busy, especially in those early years of UFO sightings. And the Gorman case, well, it became a landmark case, you could say. Why is that? What makes it stand out even today? from all those other sightings? Well, for one, you've got a credible witness. Gorman, a decorated pilot, not just someone out stargazing who might mistake a planet for a UFO. He knew what he was looking at, that's for sure. Exactly. And the duration, those 27 minutes, I mean, that's practically a lifetime in UFO sighting terms. Plus, you've got those corroborating ground witnesses. Multiple people seeing something unusual around the same time in the same area. It all adds up to a case that's really hard to just dismiss. And I think that's why it continues to fascinate us. It's like a puzzle with a few key pieces missing. Right. You can't quite complete the picture, but you know there's something more there. And that's where the Gorman dogfight really gets under your skin. It forces you to ask, what if? What if Gorman really did see something extraordinary? Is what I always think about. <laughs> exactly. And that's the power of this case. It's not just about what Gorman might have seen in the skies that day, but what it represents, a challenge to our understanding of what's possible. It's like our minds want to make sense of it, categorize it, explain it away. 
And yet the Gorman dogfight resists easy explanation. It's a genuine mystery. And that's probably why it's had such a lasting impact on our culture, too. How so? Well, you see it everywhere, don't you? Books, documentaries, movies, even video games. The Gorman dogfight, it's woven itself into our collective fascination with the unknown. It's true. Even if you're not a diehard UFO enthusiast, you've probably heard of the Gorman dogfight. It's become a part of our cultural lexicon, and that says a lot about the power of this case to capture our imaginations. Speaking of captivating cases, you mentioned Project Sign investigated a number of UFO sightings. Were there any others that stand out as particularly intriguing or controversial, like the Gorman case? Oh, absolutely. Project Sign had its hands full back then, investigating all sorts of strange encounters. One that comes to mind is the Child's Witted UFO encounter. What happened there? Well, this one takes place just a few months after Gorman's experience. Two pilots, again, experienced pilots, are flying their plane at night. Okay, so far so good. Kind of similar setup to the Gorman sighting. Right, except this time they report seeing a strange object, torpedo-shaped this time, with glowing lights flying alongside their airplane. Torpedo-shaped, huh? Now that's a new one. It gets even stranger. The pilots claimed this object, paced their plane for a while, and then just vanished right before their eyes. Vanished. Like, poof, gone. That's what they reported. Now, naturally, Project Sign investigated the incident. What was their explanation for that one? Ready for this? They attributed it to a meteor. A meteor, come <laughs> on. A meteor flying alongside an airplane. I know, right? Even back then, people had a hard time swallowing that explanation. It seems like Project Sign was really reaching for answers sometimes. Well, you have to remember the context. It was a different time. The world was on edge after the war. And the idea of unknown objects in the sky, well, it had the potential to cause quite a stir. It makes you wonder if there was pressure to downplay these sightings, maybe to avoid mass panic. It's certainly possible. The socio-political climate of the time definitely played a role in how these events were perceived and investigated. It's like trying to understand a historical event. You can't separate it from the time period in which it occurred. Exactly. And that's what makes studying these cases so fascinating. It's not just about the what, but the why why these sightings happen, why they were explained the way they were, and why they continue to resonate with us today. It all comes back to that, doesn't it? Trying to make sense of what we don't understand. The Gorman dogfight, it's a prime example of that. We want answers, we want explanations, but sometimes we're left with more questions than when we started. And that's okay, isn't it? A little mystery keeps things interesting. It definitely keeps us on our toes. Yeah. But seriously, it makes you think, if something like this could happen back then, what are we missing now with all our technology, all our advancements? That's the million dollar question, right? Are we any closer to understanding these phenomena now than we were back in 1948? What do you think? Have we cracked the code of UFOs? I wouldn't say we've cracked the code, no. There's still so much we don't know. But we're learning, we're asking the right questions, and we're definitely more open to the possibilities than we were maybe a few decades ago. That's true. The conversation around UFOs has definitely shifted in recent years. It's no longer taboo to talk about these things, to consider that we might not be alone. And that's a good thing, right? Embracing the unknown, encouraging curiosity. Absolutely. The Gorman dogfight, it reminds us that there's still so much out there to discover. Mysteries waiting to be unraveled. It's a reminder to stay curious, to keep our minds open to the possibilities, no matter how strange they might seem. Exactly. Who knows what we'll find if we keep looking up, keep asking questions. Well, on that note, I think we've reached the end of our deep dive into the Gorman dogfight. It's been a fascinating journey, that's for sure. We've covered a lot of ground, from Gorman's own account to Project Signs investigation, and even touched on the broader cultural impact of this case. And yet, there's still so much more to explore. We could spend hours dissecting every detail, debating the possibilities. And we might just do that someday. But for now, we'll leave you with this thought. The Gorman dogfight, it's more than just a UFO sighting. It's a reminder that there are things in this universe, things we may never fully understand. And that's okay. It's the mystery that keeps us exploring, keeps us asking questions. So keep those eyes on the skies and keep those minds open. Who knows what's out there waiting to be discovered? Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time.